Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com. Uh, registered with Engineering Shock today, we got a whole bunch of awesome new hobby electronics. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the new and improved LM317 variable power supply kit. The cool thing about this kit is it's got, well A, it's a good price, B, it's designed so that you can either use uh, uh, an AC input of 36 volts AC max at the uh, input or you can bypass the onboard bridge rectifier and just use straight DC up to 36 volts. The LM317 can supply up to 1 amp and goes down to 1.25 volts. So anyway, this is the final product and I'll go through, I'm going to go through the assembly procedure with you so you can literally just refer to this video and you want to put it together because it does not come with instructions. So what better instructions than to just follow along piece by piece. First we're going to start with the diodes then the capacitors, then the single resistor, then a combination of the heatsink and the LM317, then the onboard potentiometer that varies the output voltage, all going on to this PCB to end up looking like this bad boy. So let's start with the diode, shall we? Okay, so uh, what we've got here is we've got a bridge rectifier circuit. Uh, four diodes. Now, if you're, again, if you're using DC, don't put these diodes in. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you can't see the uh, cathodes, the white tips, the white tips are at this side, this side, this side, and this side. As well, um, this side and this side. I'm going to solder those in, and then we're going to worry about the, the capacitors. So we got three. 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Um, they're ceramic, they've got no polarity, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in. And they go into the three little football shaped uh, recesses on the board. The, uh, the little uh, uh, footprint on the circuit board, they look like a little football, so you can't miss them. Just have a, have a quick look. One thing I'd like to point out before I do my electrolytic capacitors is that, uh, as you can see, I've got two spaces for it, right in, right in the center and one right here. The white area of the footprint indicates the negative, which is the smaller lead of the capacitor. So the smaller lead of the capacitor goes in the white area. The positive, which is the longer, goes in the clear area that has the positive on it. Next, we're going to do our two electrolytics. Okay, so we've placed our uh, two electrolytics. As you notice, the negative uh, line in the capacitor are indicated by the white stripe. So next we're going to do our single resistor. Okay, so we've placed our single resistor. We've turned the device around. This is where the LM317 is going to go, right between this diode and this resistor. This is the resistor we just placed. Uh, heat sink is going to be placed right behind it. Uh, next step is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to take our LM317, our screw, and our heat sink. We're going to take our Phillips screwdriver. We're going to take our LM317, we're going to put it on to the... Line it up with the hole on the heat sink. And we're going to put our screw in. But here's the important part, we're not going to tighten it. We're going to, we're going to tighten it about three quarters of the way. We still want the LM317 to be very loose, or else we're going to have trouble getting into the board. Now, we'll put this aside for a second, and we'll look at the board. On the back side, there are three holes between the resistor and the two diodes that are used there for the LM317. And behind the resistor, right here and right here, there's two holes for the heat sink. So while it's going to be difficult for you to see me put it in uh, because of limitations with, with uh, our setup area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in and show you what it looks like with it in, and then we're going to solder it into place. So there are the two heat sink, the two prongs from the heat sink, and our three pins from our LM317. And once I solder that into place, we're going to tighten, we're going to tighten this up. Okay, note here, there's actually an area for a transistor, and the transistor is actually included with the kit. It's an S9013, uh, and you don't need to place this. In fact. I don't, I, I don't, when I build these, I don't place them. It's not really up to you. Regardless, you get the same functionality whether or not you place this transistor. So, we're actually not going to bother with the tra this transistor. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do the potentiometer, set it up right here. So, uh, we've got our, our potentiometer, we drop our little washer on. If you want to mount it to, to a plate, you can just use the, the washer right here, but if you're not going to do that, 
just put the washer on so you know where it is in the future in case you ever want to uh, use it. Now what I do for the cap, it comes with the cap. So what I do is I turn the knob all the way to the right, making sure, it, and making sure it's all the way to the right. And then I put the cap on so it's facing to the lower right. So then you turn it all the way left and it brings you to the lower left side. So then it gives you your full, your full, uh, say 300 degrees of rotation. Then what we're going to do is we're going to place it on the kit. Now there's five holes. Uh, two of them don't matter. You don't worry about them. Your, um, your left potentiometer uh, pin is going to go into the leftmost pin. The middle pin on your potentiometer is going to go into the third pin, and it really only fits one way. You can't you can't miss it. So I'll show I'll put it in. I'll solder it, and I'll show you the bottom. So we've got our potentiometer soldered on. Uh, one pin empty space, two pin empty empty space, three pin. So we're in our, as I said, we're in our final stages. Really, the kit is done at this point. Uh, we have to solder our input and output pins. We also have to discuss whether or not you want to use AC or DC. So if you want to solder for AC, you're going to want to employ the bridge rectifier circuit, the four diodes. Now it doesn't since uh, there's really no color coding for AC because it's you know it's a neutral signal. So you can put either uh, the output of your transformer as long as it's with you know below 36 volts AC, you can put either of your transformer outputs on either one in either one of these holes. You can actually put your DC here as well. And because of the bridge rectifier, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to get into the theory behind it, but because there's a bridge amp uh, rectifier here, if you want, if you're lazy, you can put your DC here. You'll have two voltage drops along the uh, diode, so it's not really worth it. So if you put, say, 10 volts on there, you'll really see uh, a maximum of 8 or less at the output. So, um, But you can put your positive on either one of these and your ground on either one of these. It doesn't matter. But we're going to do it differently. What we're going to do is... We're going to, uh, since we've already soldered our diodes in, we're not going to remove them. But we don't really need them. But what we're going to do is we're going to solder um, our positive wire to the pins on here and our negative wire, input wire, to these pins. And what I'll do is I'm going to just do that, solder them, and show you the bottom of the board. Okay, so from the bottom of the board, these are, our, if we want to use DC at the inputs, uh, you'll actually see a positive sign here, a, po like a, a plus sign. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but you'll see it on your board if you purchase this kit. Just solder the um, your positive to the to the to the the diode pads here, and your negative to the diode pads here. Now what I'll do is I'll flip it around so you can see it from here. As you can see, we completely bypassed the uh, diodes. Now again, if you don't, if you know you're going to use DC of the inputs, just don't put the diodes in. Use them for something else. But now we'll do the outputs, and then we'll do a demonstration. Okay, so we got two sets of holes on the other side for our outputs. I actually soldered to the bottom here because uh, uh, my wire broke off. So you got your ground and your your positive output. Now, if you actually look on the back, if you're having trouble determining which one's which, even though even though I'm showing you in the video, you actually see that both both grounds on the DC ground input and DC ground output are actually connected through the traces. So uh, but again, here this is ground, and this is your output. So now let's do a quick demonstration. Okay, so we've got about 18.4 volts at the input, and we're seeing a max of 17.20 at the output. Now, my uh, the power supply that I have as the input, it maxes out at about 18.5 volts. So you can really have this up to 36 volts. Uh, maximum one one amp output. So be careful. You don't want to destroy your uh, your LM317. Pretty hard to do it. They're pretty versatile chips. Anyway, so I'm using I'm, I'm not using AC. Most of you probably won't be using AC inputs. You'll be using the sorry. You'll be using a DC voltage of the input, like a battery or power supply, a wall wart maybe. Anyway, so now I'll vary the output, and you can have a look at it. Should go down to about 1.25 volts. Again, you have about th about 300 degrees of rotation. 1.29. So let's bring it back up. And 
and there's your variable power supply. Now you can buy these up from us already built, but if you want to have a little bit of fun, the problem is is they didn't come with uh, with uh, any schematics, they didn't come with instructions, so I'm trying to provide as much as humanly possible to you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it, hopefully you buy the kit. We sell them in singles and we sell them in fives. So you save some money if you buy them in five. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you come and visit us. Register at engineeringshock.com and visit us also at electroniclessons.com.